Welcome to Melbourne Private Apartments where you can enjoy luxurious waterfront accommodation that feels like a home away from home. My name is Lana Murphy and today I'm joined by a VIP guest, former world number one tennis player Victoria Azarenka. She's won two Australian Opens and is now back in the city and a very proud guest of Melbourne Private Apartments. Thank you for staying with us, Victoria. Thank you for having me. How are you enjoying your stay in Melbourne so far? Uh, I love it here. It's my uh, third year uh, staying here, so it definitely feels like home away from home and uh, I get to know a little bit of a staff here and just, you know, uh, it's very comforting thought when you when we travel so much and you go to to a place where you feel like oh I've been there I feel comfortable there I feel you know good because you know playing uh, in the tournament big tournament where there's a lot of pressure a lot of uh, emotions uh, it's good to have that you know safe space where you can come back to and relax so I'm very happy to be here. What's it like having a lovely view over the water and the city at the same time? Oh, it's amazing. It's, you know, you wake up to, to like a good mood. And what I love about staying here is it's a little bit further away from, from, from a lot of people, which, which uh, is, is a big bonus for me. And just the opportunity to make your own breakfast, not have to go, you know, in, like in the hotel to, to, to a main, uh, like a lobby or, or, or anything like that. And to cook a little bit, I, I like to cook. So uh, it definitely gives that home environment, which, which I really appreciate. And you touched on the location, obviously, it's just, you know, a stone's throw away from the city, gives you a bit of breathing space, but is it still close enough to the tennis centre that it's easy enough for you? you you've ridden here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I like to take the, the bike there or a scooter. Uh, and so the location is great. Uh, it's private enough, close enough to everything else. So uh, I feel like it's a perfect combination. You're making your own breakfast. What what do you have for breakfast, Victoria as a uh, <laughs> Honestly, I'm actually having a pretty hard time with breakfast right now. So it's it's a it's a it will be a simple coffee and maybe like a croissant right now. I'm not a big breakfast person, but because I practice, I have to eat something. But dinner is more like my thing, where I will make some uh, fish or some salads or like a ramen. I'm into ramen a lot lately. So yeah, yeah dinner is more like my thing to do. Have you been able to get out to any of the restaurants? Are there any Melbourne restaurants that you kind of love to go to in the years that you return here? Uh, I only been to one. I went to Nobu, um, kind of like a go-to spot, I guess, for everybody. I'm a huge fan of, of Japanese food and sushi and a good quality. So that was my, my one stop. And uh, yeah, I want to actually go maybe like a St. Kilda beach or something to see. I, I've been there last year and it was really cool with the sunset. So I want to actually explore a little bit more like a local um, restaurants and maybe like a Victoria's Market or something like that. I love the sound of that. And I'm sure you'll put one Instagram post up and you'll have millions of recommendations from locals here. We always love to tell people where to eat here yeah. in Melbourne. Um, you have been to our city for so many times over the last decade. Uh, what is it, I guess, that you love most about Melbourne? Well, you know, I was the first day I arrived. Uh, I went to like to the mall and we rode to the city. I actually, took the bike with my physio, who was on the scooter, and I just forget how uh, cool Melbourne is. You know, with a tram and like different little areas. Some are, you know, we went through the Chinatown, which is, like has the, its own flavor. Then you have like the big uh, shopping, you know, fancy, uh, fancy uh, shops. Uh, all the little great cafes with uh, particular like street artwork. That's something that like I always notice in Melbourne and I love it. Um, but the combination of, you know, big city and like ability, you can walk around and you can ride on the bike and have the park. Uh, so I, I feel like that's, that's really, really cool. And uh, I have my camera this year with me. I got back into my photography hobby, so I'm gonna go and explore a little bit more of the city, maybe some some murals with with a pop art. And, oh yeah. Beautiful. You've got a good agenda. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta play tennis first and then we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of tennis, I mean, yeah. you've won two Australian Opens. How special is the AO to you and are you eyeing off a third win? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the goal is always the, always the crown. Um, 
I, I never really look back uh, too much. Obviously, I feel very uh, comfortable and um, very excited always coming here. But to me, it's about creating new memories and, and kind of trying to be present because it's, it's so easy in our sport to like be ahead of yourself or to look back and to compare. So it's really like a mindful exercise that I try to do and create new memories and, and new experiences. So I'm excited. I, I'm excited for this season. Um, I know I'm not going to play for too long, uh, in too, too many years left, so I want to really, you know, give it all I have and see where it takes me. Amazing. I feel like maybe you've just indicated that you're not the person to really concentrate on outside influences, but is there anyone that you've been eyeing off and you kind of see as your competition, anyone coming through the ranks, any competitors that you're going, oh, um, that might be a problem? <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Uh, there's, I feel like there's a lot of great talent, actually. Um, I just played in Adelaide against a, a young Czech girl, Noskova, who was in the final, and she seems like a tremendous talent. I played another girl, a Chinese girl, um, Gwen Zheng, I don't, I don't want to butcher, butcher her name, uh, also with like, you know, a lot of talent. I feel like there is a great uh, new generation we're um, coming up now where um, it's exciting to, you know, to face them because I remember when I was 16, 17, 18 playing on the tour and, you know, you go fearless, you have nothing to lose. So you, you're constantly bal battling those, you know, those girls, which is, which is exciting. And then it's all down, comes down to, you know, somebody who is consistent on the top. And, you know, last year we had Iga Svatek who, who was, you know, playing amazing tennis. So uh, I feel like tennis, specifically women's tennis, it's, it's, it's such a high level and it's such entertainment where you don't know, you kind of keep your, yourself on your toes and you gotta, and you gotta be ready every single match. Like first rounds are not like, oh, just first rounds warm up. It's, it's full, on, full on competition, full on war right away. And you touched on it, it really is this new generation, isn't it? Because it seems like a lot of the, particularly in the women's tour, a lot of the big names, it's kind of a changing of the guard. Big names are stepping down. You're still around, your reputation, re reputation speaks for itself, but there are, there's all these young up and comers. We spoke to a 15 year old before that's just, you know, qualified for the main draw. Yeah. How amazing to be playing against young talent like that. Uh, it's tough, it, it, it's tough because what I said, you know, they're coming up it, and it's, it's Especially like first, second year, it's like you don't really have much to prove. You play more free, which makes them more dangerous. Then it's about, you know, keeping, keeping that level up and being consistent. That's a second challenge. But the, in the first, I feel like you get that wave of this, you know, great talent, fearless players. Uh, very uh, explosive, aggressive. So um, it also makes me think about, you know, how do I adapt to that? You know, the game is changing. So how, what do, what do I need to do to uh, ex excel at this level? So it's it's exciting as well. You know, it's a different type of challenge for sure. Uh, it's frustrating sometimes when, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my god, I'm playing a 16 year old or 18 year old. It's like, wow, it's it's. It's a big difference, but I also look back at it as like I was in that position and I do appreciate, um, you know, I, I appreciate new generation and I'm excited, you know, when I, when I stop playing tennis, how far the tennis is going to go because ultimately I'm, I am a tennis fan. I want our sport to win. I want our sport to grow and uh, the young talent right now is, is a huge part of it. Beautiful. It's great to hear you're a tennis fan. So are we, yeah. and we're fans of you. So thank, thank you for you. joining us.